Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm a little excited here where I'm finally be able to tell you this that we are going to roll out the FPGA firmware update for the Dynafrips DAC. We have not been doing this for the past so many years. Some of you may have known that we roll out the USB MCO firmware update for the DSP. This particular unit is called a Digital Signal Processing Module where it comprises quite a lot of stuff in this module itself. Let me put my faithful pointer and point to you what are the things that happening here in this DSP and what we are going to do next for the FPGA firmware update. This particular unit here comprises of the USB receiver module where if you follow Dynafrips, we have been rolling out USB MCO firmware update for this USB receiver to fix some bugs to improve the sound quality of the USB receiver. So if you use the USB input of the Dynafrips DAC on this new DSP, I have to stress this point. This new DSP rolled out in year 2019. Anything before that, we were using another USB receiver, it's called Amanero. And this particular new DSP, the USB firmware right here is user upgradable by using a Mac and Windows computer. So if you use the USB module or the USB inputs of Dynafrips DAC, you might have known or you might have experienced the USB firmware update as we roll out the new firmware. This USB MCO firmware is same applied to all the Dynafrips DAC. So if you have the Aries, if you have the Pontus, the Venus, Terminator 2, Terminator Plus, or even the original Terminator with the upgraded DSP module, you may upgrade the USB MCO firmware. There's another important part of this DSP module that is doing the digital signal processing. It is the small little chip here that is less than, uh, less than 20 by 20 mm. This is the FPGA from a company called Altera. And apparently Altera and Intel is the same company right now. This FPGA is Field Programmable Gate Array where Dynafrips engineer, the firmware engineer, did the FPGA firmware to do its job to process the digital signal, digital signal that's coming into this DSP module and it process it, apply, operate, apply oversampling, slow filter, fast filter or non-oversampling by this FPGA here and output the processed digital signal to the R2R circuitry. This FPGA chip is feel upgradable. We have not been rolling out the FPGA firmware update is really because the Dynafrips FPGA firmware is more or less matured ever since we released this DSP module. Undoubtedly, there are some bugs arise along the way as the user uses the deck, as the user feedback to us the issue that they were facing we always feedback the same to Dynafrips and the software engineer of Dynafrips will look into what happened and how to address the issue raised by the customer. So there are some minor FPGA firmware upgrades along the way done in the factory to address the issue raised by the customer. So if you have been using Dynafrips DAC without issue, we do not proactively to ask you to upgrade the FPGA firmware. One of the reason was really because upgrading the FPGA firmware is a little bit risky. You have to tell us the correct model that you're using, the, the DAC model. For example, in this case, it's the Aries 2. If you are using Pontus, then you have to tell us you're using a Pontus and you have to share with us the photo, a close-up photo of this FPGA model in order for us to supply you the correct FPGA firmware update too. 
Updating the FPGA firmware is not particularly difficult. If you have done the USB MCU firmware update before, it is the same procedure, just that the FPGA firmware update takes a little bit longer time because the, the, transmitter, the data transmission from the computer to the FPGA uh, flashing takes a little bit more data, it takes a little bit more time. But flashing the correct firmware to the FPGA module is very important. If you flash the correct firmware to the correct module for the correct text, it should be fine. But if you flash the wrong FPGA firmware to the FPGA module that is in the wrong deck, then it will break the deck. So again, come back to why is it we did not proactively roll out the FPGA firmware was really because we do not want you to make a mistake by downloading the FPGA firmware anywhere else uh, in the world and in the internet world that is not supplied by us and it may potentially break the deck. I have to say this before we proceed to the next part so that you are aware what are the risks involved for this FPGA firmware update. But at this point, at this moment, I'm happy to tell you that we are ready to roll out the FPGA firmware update for Dynaflip DAC, ranging from the Ares 2, Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator 2, and the Terminator Plus. If you have the older generation Terminator DAC, it is also possible to upgrade the FPGA firmware if you purchase the DSP, from, DSP module upgrades from us previously and had the DSP module upgraded in the original Terminator. So why is it there's a need for us to roll out this FPGA firmware update at this point? Last year, we released 12th anniversary edition Dynaflips DSC on the market. This 12th anniversary edition DSC not only has the hardware upgrade, the firmware running in this DSP module is also optimized. There are some areas of improvement optimized for the DSP that we thought we should benefit the existing customer to upgrade their existing deck to improve the sound quality. So what are the area of improvement we are talking about? The first one, improve FIFO buffer and reclocking architecture. FIFO buffer and reclocking has been Dynaflip's trademark where all the digital input are FIFO buffer and reclocked by the crystals found in the DAC. This reduces or eliminates the jitter, the potential jitter coming from the transport to the DAC. But the trouble with the FIFO buffer and reclocking is that if the source clock and the DAC clocks, the differences are too big, it may result in buffer overrun or buffer underrun. Some of the users may have experienced this. If you use a consumer grade transport, for some reason, I cannot say for sure, it's, it's all speculation, I do not have the data with me, you may experience skipping once in a while for, for a prolonged period of time of playback. Let's say for example, if you spin a disc, the disc lasts for 60 minutes and once in a while you will hear this blip, pop or click once in a while. Uh, that was, in my opinion, was due to the FIFO buffer and reclocking of the FIFO buffer underrun or overrun due to the differences between the source clock, the transport, and the DAC clock. So Dynaflips has revised the FIFO buffer and reclocking architecture in a new FPGA firmware to reduce the effect of these differences between the source clock as well as the DAC clock. Now, you, you want to hear this from me. We have sent this firmware for a couple of customers to upgrade their DAC who has been actively or rather the skipping or blips of this um, transport and DAC playback in their system has been happening quite frequent. Ever since the upgrade of the FPGA firmware, according to the customer, the, this has been reduced quite significantly. So again, I can't say for sure that this will resolve the issue the customer has been facing, but the firmware update is quite promising. The second improvement of this FPGA firmware update is the audio latency. FIFO buffer and reclocking is essentially buffering the data from the transport in the memory of the DAC 
and the DAC we use is internal clock to reclock this data and output the analog signal to the integrated M or the hi-fi system that you have. This process takes a little bit of time where if you watch movie or stream video using Dynaflip DAC, you may experience audio latency where some people call lip sync issue, where the lips and the audio does not sync as the DAC processes the data. So Dynaflips optimized this aspect where the audio latency is very low. I've been using the new firmware to watch YouTube videos, to watch Netflix, and in my opinion, I did not have the lip sync issue in my setup. The third improvement, optimize of the FPGA processing of the DSP to improve the sound quality overall. So come back to the first DSP that we ever released in year 2017. In my opinion, it sounds a little bit warmer. It sounds a little bit um, darker. Amount of details is less, but ever since the release of the, this DSP module in year 2019, the sound quality improves where the amount of details, the extension in treble, the, the extension in the bass region as well improves a lot with this DSP. So Dynaflip's engineer has been working on a new DSP scheme to further elevate the sound quality. So this 12th anniversary edition released since last year, we have been applying the same to the 12th anniversary edition deck. And we are trying to bring this FPGA firmware update with the sound quality improvement to the existing customer with the new DSP. So we are ready to roll out this FPGA firmware update to you for our existing customer to improve the deck that you have been using. Right, so this is how I mentioned that the FPGA has different model. You need to tell us the deck model that you are using, the FPGA chip model that is residing in this DAC before we can supply the correct firmware tool to you. All we want is a successful FPGA firmware update so that you can enjoy the new sound quality of what Dynaflips can offer. But failure of doing so may have rendered the deck to brick. So the deck will no longer be working. You need to ship it back to us and we'll use our tool, our FPGA tool, to update the firmware correctly before it can work again. So the good news is, if you are in the US, our US service center can help you to do this work if the deck is brick in the US. If you are in the EU, we also have one of the EU service center in Slovenia that can help you to update the FPGA firmware if the deck is brick. But that's really the last thing that we want. We'll go through this very carefully with all the owners We'll put in a lot more resources to do this FPGA firmware update for a very successful firmware rollout for all the customer. So this 12th anniversary edition firmware update is the name that we have given to this, to this event here. I know some of the company has this FPGA firmware update for their tech and they name it with a meaningful name so that people can know or can tell that this FPGA firmware is a specific name. But for us, we thought it is more meaningful to say that this is a 12th anniversary edition FPGA firmware update that is available for all the Dynaflip stack that is using the latest DSP. Right, we'll roll out this FPGA firmware update in badges, starting from the most popular Ares 2. So I'm going to show you how to identify the FPGA module here, how to dismantle the casing of the Ares 2 in order for you to take a photo and share the FPGA model with us so that we can supply the correct firmware tool to you. Okay, let me just put these two things aside and let me start working to show you how to dismantle the Ares 2 chassis and take a photo of the FPGA firmware, no, FPGA chip and send it to us. Okay, this is the Ares 2, it's a pretty small unit. There's a screw at the back here to secure the house, the, the top cover to the chassis. There are six screws at the bottom that you need to remove as well so that the top cover can be slide open. All you need is a Phillips screwdriver that can allow you to remove the plus 
screw that is securing this Aries 2 DAC. There are total one at the back and six at the bottom. So um, for the rest of the model, we plan to take a separate video for each model so that you, you guys can know if you have other model, other Dina Phipps DAC model, um, you, you need to do this work and share with us a photo of the FPGA chip in order for us to identify the correct firmware for your unit so that we can share the FPGA firmware update tool with you. Uh, if you ask me, is it worthwhile doing this? I'll definitely say yes. Uh, this resolves some of the bugs that uh, customer has been reporting in the past. The FIFO buffer reclock underrun and overrun as well as the audio latency and most importantly I think it's a sound quality improvement. Right, I've removed six screws at the bottom and one screw at the back and at this moment I should be able to slide this top cover open. Okay, that is it. So put this cover safely aside and this is how the Aries 2 look like internally. Let me just again bring my faithful pointer whoops, for my daughter. This is the FPGA chip that we are interested in. So all we need you to do is to take a photo of this FPGA chip in high resolution and send it to us, follow the instruction. There will be an instruction on Dinafrip's website to show you the guide, the, the detailed guide of doing this in order for us to supply the correct firmware update tool to you. And share this to us and we'll guide you through how to update the firmware for your DAC. Okay. I think um, this video is kind of cover why we want to roll out the FPGA firmware and how do you identify the FPGA model in the deck itself for the Aries 2. In my next video, I'm going to show you the, again, we are going to roll out this FPGA firmware update by badges. Right now, we are rolling out for Aries 2. The next one will be the Pontus. The next will be the Venus and subsequently the Terminator. Why is it we are rolling out in this fashion? It's really because we have a lot of every customer waiting for this FPGA firmware update for quite some time. So this video is going to be quite interesting. We expect to receive a lot of emails from the customer. And if we do get a little bit late in the reply, please bear with us. We'll do our best to support you. Right, I think my job is done here and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oops.